Hi everybody, this is Cindy from Vintage to New, and today we're gonna um, work on our on our uh, our book, our journal, and so we are going to be making this little envelope here that you can see. Um, looks like this in the back, this inside, and it's decorated in the front like that. So let's see how I did that. And so this envelope, um, you could use any template. This envelope is one of my templates. And what I did is I, I overlaid on it, um, and it's an actual photograph of an old distressed piece of paper. This is the outline for the template. It says the top flap there. And then I printed on the back just a nice print so that we don't have to worry about having just a white inside. Now you can cut this out. Um, oh, I already messed up. I, I left this nice and big here so you could make a tag out of it or something. So don't do like I did. Start cutting over here and just cut just so that you're on the inside of the line. You don't want that really dark line on your envelope. So just keep going all the way around. It's really nice to have um, if you just print a template from someplace, be sure to print something on the back unless you just want to have a white inside your envelope. Um, sometimes it's nice to take and line it with uh, a book page or, or something like that. But when you do that, it makes it really heavy and bulky. And it's just hard for it to close. This way it's just a flat piece of cardstock. And um, when I print on my inkjet printer, which this was an inkjet printer, I use uh, matte photo paper. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's about the weight of um, cardstock. And it just prints out so nice. So now, if you have a scoring board, you would score this, and I'll show you doing one of those. It's really nice um, to use a scoreboard because you get a really good score. Um, I was having a hard time seeing a straight line all the way down, so I just took a marker and went down one line so that I could see it. So just place your from this little V right here to this little V right there and then just score it down. So you're just scoring it right along that. So let's do one more. We'll do two of each. Um, so get it lined up so that that little, you're right at the V with your scoreboard and score it down. Okay, so if you don't have a scoreboard, what are you going to do? Well, a couple things you can do. Um, I had a ruler. I just had it. Okay, well, we'll do it without. So we would just line it up right across those V's and do our best to get a nice crisp fold. And I was off just a little bit. That does happen if you're not scoring first. Okay, so there's that. Let me try it one more time and see if I can do a better job. The other thing that's really helpful, whether you're using a scoreboard or not, is your bone folder. So let me find mine. Hold on. Okay, it's right here. So just take it and go down there and make that score really nice, or that fold really nice. Now this is the one I scored, and it should just fold right over. And that one. 
And depending on how accurate you are, see like right here, right there, it's just bent up a little bit. It was just a little too long. So I don't know if it was my scoring or my folding or what, but just give it a little trim. Maybe it was my cutting because I still see some line right there. So there. So now you have a nice, really water-stained, foxed <laughs> envelope and you didn't have to do anything. Isn't that great? So now what I want to do is take my ink and I want to ink this right here. The folds, just get them really good and dark. So. Then the only other places that you really have to antique, if you're going to do it, you're going to vintage it up, would be your cut lines because we have a printed paper here and a printed paper here, but that paper where you cut it is still white. So give that a little hit too. Then um, you can see I've already um, digitally put stuff around the edge. But if you wanted to do just a little bit more to kind of blend it in a little bit, that would be great. It doesn't really need it, but it looks nice. And then if you wanted to do some on the inside, the inside doesn't have any going around the edge. And it just looks, it looks good. Most of it you won't see. You'd only see the flap, really, unless you're opening it up and looking down inside. So just that easy and just that quick, our envelope is done. All right, so um, I did mark which was the top flap. They are just slightly, slightly different. Um, but uh, it's the one with the watermark on it or this one. So if you do it the other way, it doesn't end up just right. So this way, it closes properly. So either side could be the top. Okay, so let's get down to the fun part. So what we're gonna do is um, just a little bit of a collage, I guess you would call it. Um, in your kit, if you chose to do my kit, it came with some little tea cards. We're going to use this one. Um, I used this one. I just think they're so precious for, uh, for this one here. So we're going to use that. And then I have an advertising kit. <laughs> I thought these were so funny. Um, they're just advertisements for all kinds of things for, um, I'll probably never say it right, Poughkeepsie, New Jersey. So if you know anybody in Poughkeepsie, <laughs> you could get these and see the addresses like 407 and 409 Main Street. It used to be a furniture store. Um, 12 Garden Street. Um, it's I.L. Varian. It deals in meat, poultry, and vegetables. Um, it caters to hotels, schools, restaurants, supplies, and specialty. <laughs> Another meat and poultry at 376 Main Street. A carriage furniture place. Anyway, so I'm just going to pick one of these. Um, I think one of my favorite, well, there's this piano one is really nice. Where's the one I wanted? Um, it was an eye doctor. Even back in the olden days, 
having good uh, illustrations really make a difference. <laughs> oh, I can't find it. Sorry. This boot and shoe place, it's a pair of shoes, um, a lady's boot with littler shoes behind it, like a train. <laughs> but that was funny. Uh, this one was a hardware store and sporting goods, and it's got fly rods and all that. Is it behind here? Nope. There it is. It was hiding. So take a peek at that. Isn't that funny? So this one is the one that I'm going to use for this envelope. So, and if you don't want to, um, to get these or you don't have something like this, you could use just a piece of um, decorated or even not decorated uh, tag board uh, to make just, we're just making it a little pocket is all it's going to be. So, so there's that. And here's my little girls that are going to go down in the pocket. I wanted to do a little piece of um, music down at the bottom. And again, this is when I wanted my ruler. Hmm. Here it is. So this is just a piece of texture paper I have. Um, it's one of mine, but it can be anything, literally anything, that you would like to have on your decorations. All right, and I'm going to put a piece of it just going across the bottom here, and I'm just going to rough cut it in like that. And I'm going to antique the edges because once you uh, glue it down, it's really hard to antique it, of course. So what this is, is some antique music that was handwritten, overlaid with lace, and then overlaid again with some writing. So it's just a whole conglomeration of things put together to just give it something pretty. All right, so there's my top. Here's my music I'm going to use. Okay, a little bit of glue. All right, and then we're going to just trim this off. You just turn it over and trim it off the back. Um, a lot of these ideas I got from the Mushroom Market and I will link her uh, YouTube channel below and she also has an Etsy store but um, she does really cute things. She's from um, New Zealand I think. Maybe it's Australia. Um, she's fun to listen to, of course. So there's that. All right, now I'm going to take my little advertisement and put it on next. And I printed on the back of these in case I wanted to use them for um, tickets, too. That way, you know, the back is already decorated. So, oh. One thing that I learned from Wendy at Wendy's um, Journal Adventure, I really enjoy her her channel also, is her tip is, um, so this is my pocket that I want to glue down, right? And so I want to leave the top open. And she always says, hold the top so you remember not to put glue there because uh, no matter how hard you try, you will put it in the wrong spot eventually if you don't do this. So I just think that's such a great tip. And so I really appreciate that one, Wendy. So there's my pocket. All right. And I also think I'm going to put just a little tiny piece of lace on this one. Just right here under my advertisement.
Um, I'm using Fabri-Tac glue. Um, it's expensive, but it works really good. Um, and it dries and just sets so nice and quick. So there you go. Then um, I've been fussy cutting some florals and these are out of these are out of a better homes and gardens book um, that had watercolor illustrations in it. This is an actual uh, rose that was in the book and I just I really closely cut out the real ones. The watercolor ones, I just I left a white border around. And so I'm just going to go through here and pick what it is I would like to see on my envelope. See, so, you know, like that one, way too big. This real rose, kind of cute, but it's not really what I'm looking for. These little crocuses. I don't know, those look kind of cute. Although the picture that we're using has red roses in it, or kind of pinky red roses. So do I have any red roses in here? Ooh, that's not a rose, that's like a primrose. Here's an old-fashioned rose. So that one's got possibilities. So, um, just get yourself a, a book or a magazine. Usually a book has better, better illustrations in it. Way too big. That one's really kind of cute, and I really like this one. So, oh, these gladiolas. That would be pretty, too. So now I've got three that I really like. And just get a little tin, and then um, when you're sitting down watching TV, get out your embroidery scissors, you know, the little tiny ones that are really sharp. That's what I use that works the best for me. Um, if you use your great big scissors, it's um, it's really clunky and hard to do. Um, I think the colors of this one go the best, so I'm going to choose that one. I need to antique around the edges just a tiny little bit. This has a lot of white in it. It's kind of stark compared to the rest of everything else. So go around the edge and then just give it just a little pounce. All right, let me put my gladiolas away. I think right about there will look just adorable. And then just glue this on. Okay. I'm going to tuck it under that lace just a little. Come up the side, but I'm not going to block any of the top. My music still shows there. Now, I was messing around with these. And they're cute, absolutely cute, just the way they are. Um, I had purchased a corner punch that would punch them like a ticket, and I can't find it anywhere. So what I did is I pulled out my 5 8 inch round circle, and I'm just giving it a good guess. and keeping it the same all the way around. And you don't have to do anything like this, but to me it just gives it just that little bit more something different. 
and then just go back and hit that again and it's kind of got that ticket shape which is kind of fun and see I didn't put anything on the back of these when I printed them so maybe we should put just a little something back here so when you pull it out it's just not super white because when you have your journal and you want to show it to all your friends you know all this stuff's going to come out you want it to be pretty so there we go so and I think the little girls should go in this way and the other thing I like to do is um just use my ruler and go down and make sure when I glued it, it didn't get stuck. Stick my little girls in like that. And then in my other one, I've done some people. Um, Tim Holtz does these too, um, but I just have people and my whole page of people only took me 15 minutes to cut out and I just thought they were really cute. Um, look at this football player guy. <laughs> yeah, that's what it looked like in the early, early 1900s. So I think I'll use this lady. I used this little ballerina girl here. So I think I'm just going to stick her in the back. Um, Tim Holtz calls his paper dolls. If you want to try to find some of his, or if you want to try to find mine, that would be great too. Well, she's kind of tall. Hold on. I have one lady who's sitting down. Let's try her. There she goes. And then pull the girls back out. So there, there we go. I think that looks really nice. And so this one is done. Now we could go ahead and glue it closed, make it an envelope and put something in it. I will glue it so that that flap is on the inside. Um, or you can leave it open. Somebody could do their journaling on it and then just fold it back up. So um, to put it in your book, just take it and um, hold it over the page. Ugh. Put the flap over the page and put a sa uh, safety pin, a paper clip on it. So there's our first little embellishment that's going to go into our into our journal and so I think it's adorable there's our two different ones so our two different signatures um, they're not exactly the same but they rhyme oh and looking at this it reminded me I'm going to take this over and just for decoration's sake I'm going to um, zigzag around the edge like this one is zigzagged so anyway, until next time, this was Cindy from Vintage to New, so thanks for stopping by.